Hi guys, Epoch here. Welcome to my lab. Today we're gonna look at the Aoi ES900i. So I already unboxed this links up here and I'm pretty impressed with my first impressions of this. So in this review, we're gonna find out if it's really worth it, especially in the sound department. But before that, we review Budget Fi to Mid Fi Audio Gear. So if you're into that, consider subscribing. And we're also gonna have a Budget Fi giveaway soon. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna announce it in the channel update pretty soon. Okay, let's start first with the build. So this might be the best built earphone I've tested under 199 pesos or under $5. This really has very nice build. So here in the lobes, it is made of metal and I like the finish, the sort of accent chrome kind of finish that they have here. It is not removable cable though. It does have that flat cable that makes it more tangle proof compared to your maybe KZ counterparts. Here in the ear tips, it's kind of soft, not your like KZ finish. Uh, I don't like the KZ finish. This is better than the KZ finish. But of course, this feels kind of cheap. But uh, the texture is not so bad overall. It does come with a mic and also a play and pause button. Here in the fork, it is made of metal and uh, yeah, that feels kind of reassuring. I was really surprised that this is metal as well because this is just under $5. It's really impressive that you, have, you find a lot of metal here in this super cheap earphone. It also has an L plug which is really good, especially for portable use. It, it does have that L plug with that extension. So if you have bigger cases, this will be easier to use it there. But take note guys, this is a cheap earphone. I've received reports that some units tend to bug down after some time. So just something to note for you guys. Comfort wise, this doesn't have the CIEM kind of fit. So it doesn't have the ear hook and it also doesn't have the flush fit on your ears. This is not that stable fit compared to your CIEM counterparts. This is okay in fit, I would say, but not the most secure fit on your ear. So I'd say comfort-wise, this is sort of below average for me. The KZ counterparts have better comfort. The CIEM counterparts have better comfort compared to this one. Isolation also is kind of below average because yeah, this is not a super flush fit in your ear. So it mostly isolates using the ear tips, not really the lobes itself. It doesn't have removable cable as well. So you can't change this for something new once this breaks apart. So I see build overall still punches above its price range. Again, remember that this is just 199 pesos. This is really good build for the price. Now let's go to the meat of our discussion, which is the sound. So overall, this is a punchy sounding earphone. It's musical sounding. It has that warm tilt. So it does have bass here. For those bass heads, you may like this. Though it's not so well resolving and quite muddy sounding in some tracks because of that being bass forward. Sound signature is warm to the point of being muddy. So this has sort of a lower mid accentuation. Usually that makes it a bit more muddy in some tracks. Highs. Highs has a treble roll off. The body is good which is kind of surprising. It's not that well resolving, but I would say it's all right for the price. It's quite thin sounding, so the cymbals may sound tinny, but it does have nice energy and nice punch to that highs. Quite airy characteristic as well in that high. So yeah, this is not highs that I will praise definitely, but I would say it's all right for the price. Mids. Mids are actually surprisingly layered. Well, I would say uh, mids are the strong suit of this. It has good body also and good energy in the mids. And I would say it's quite relaxed mids as well. Not, uh, you know, the most punchy compared to the highs here. Bass, bass is not super extended, uh, but it does have substantial bass in this because yeah, this is quite forward in the mix. The bass is quite in the boomy side, but not overly boomy. It does have some rumble in some tracks. So definitely if you're a bass head, this might be something for you. Soundstage, now this is the reason why I think this is worth it for the price. The soundstage here is impressive for the price. It's probably bigger 
than the KZ soundstage and that is quite a statement because yeah KZ's imaging the imaging is also acceptable for the price I would say below average to average in terms of imaging so soundstage and imaging definitely is impressive here so even if the highs are not good here soundstage and imaging is something to look forward to in this earphone Hearing comfort, this can be fatiguing after some time because due to that sort of high attack and quite punchy sounding, especially at higher volume. So this is not your sort of relaxed kind of listen. So after maybe one to two hours, you may want to take this off just to rest your ears and then put it back again. Earphone comparison. So compared to the Vido, this is definitely warmer compared to the Vido, though the Vido is fuller sounding. The Vido has more energetic sound, more kind of in-your-face sound. I still prefer the Vido in general. Compared to the Xiaomi Pistons 2, similar in sound and tonality, but Xiaomi has better highs. Overall, I prefer the Pistons in the sound more compared to the Huawei. Compared to the QKZ CK8, the CK8 has a more balanced approach more fuller sound across the range though the CK8 is also quite muddy but it is more resolving than the Awe and the, the CK8 has better highs as well. Genre pairing. So when listening to hip hop tracks this is actually good because of that being bass forward in the mix. When listening to rock music the cymbals there may sound tinny because of the highs here. Yeah the highs here are not so good so I would say this is not for rock music. EDM music is okay as well because of that bass rumble and quite bass being forward in the mix. Guitar tracks are not so good here because the highs are not good here. So definitely this is more for like hip-hop or EDM kind of music. Of course for movie watching this is okay as well. For gaming maybe not because uh, it is quite a punchy sounding IEM. The explosions may hurt your ear after some time. Amplification. So starting with the Note 8 this is the thinnest sounding of the bunch. It's not so well resolving. Going toward the Surface Book 2, it has a slight increase in resolution level but the same sound stage. Going to the WM1A, it's similar in resolution level than the Surface Book and also the same sound stage. So it doesn't scale from laptop to adapt that much but uh, compared to a cell phone and the DAP, it does have some difference in resolution. For 199 pesos, there's a lot of value here. The build may be the best that I have tested under 199 pesos or around $5. It is really off brace here. The sound is okay, the highs are not so good, mids are good, bass is good. The sound and imaging is bigger than your KZ counterpart. So definitely from that point alone, this may be really worth it for you. If you're a bass set and if you value the sound stage, maybe this is a worthy pickup. From that point alone, I'd say this is worth it. But for me, overall recommendation still goes to the Xiaomi Pistons. Uh, it has similar price, uh, but the Xiaomi Pistons, the highs there are better. Uh, but of course, the Xiaomi Pistons, the build is not as good as the Awe. So you need to sort of weigh what is more worth it for you. Is better sound worth it for you? Or is build more worth it for you? So if you like build, go for the Awe. If you like, you know, the best sound in the price range, go for the Xiaomi so that is my review. Hopefully you like that. Of course, I'm gonna review a lot more earphones in the future. We have this, the QKZs coming up and I also have the KZ AS6 on the way here now. Hopefully this, hopefully the AS6 comes right away uh, to my place. I can, you know, get to review it. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna review a lot more earphones in the future. Let me know down below as well what you want me to compare it to and stuff like that. I'm gonna start, you know, reviewing sub five dollar, more sub five dollar earphones now because I've sort of saturated my sub twenty dollar earphones already. I want to transfer to sort of more ranges in my review cycle. So. Yeah, let me know down below if you know more like sub $5 earphones. I'm gonna check them out as well. And of course, I'm gonna declare a winner there. I'm gonna do an ultimate comparison of the sub $5 earphones and hopefully, you know, find what's, what is best for you, especially for this holiday shopping. So this is Derek. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Perfect.